Assalamu alaikum, this is Dr. Hasna and today we will be studying the intercostal nerve. So let's get right into it. The intercostal nerve is the sole nerve supply of your intercostal spaces and obviously the muscle that lie in those spaces. So as you all know, let me give you a basic background knowledge so you know what I'm talking about. So as you all know, we have the thoracic vertebrae. That was basically your back or the vertebral column. That is your back. What is the point of that vertebral column is to protect something very precious. And what are we protecting? The spinal cord. The thoracic vertebrae that we talked about, they were protecting your thoracic part of the spinal cord. So as you all know, these vertebra had spaces between them. Why did they have spaces for a structure to pass by? The spinal cord has to give nerves to your body. Hence, nerves need to come out of your spinal cord and supply your body. They come out the, through the spaces of between these vertebra. And obviously, in the thoracic part of your spinal cord, the thoracic spinal nerves come out. The thoracic spinal nerves are about 12 in number. So T1 to T12 are your thoracic spinal nerves. The intercostal nerve is formed by the anterior primary rami of the T1 to T11 thoracic spinal nerves after the dorsal primary rami has been given off. So let me give you a more in-depth explanation of what I'm talking about. Imagine this is a cut section of your spinal cord. Suppose I'm cutting your spinal cord from right here and we are taking this piece and looking at it from above. What you will see is there will be a dorsal root and a ventral root or an anterior root. The dorsal root carries all the motor fibers. What are the motor fibers? They basically give supply to your muscles to carry out actions. Anteriorly, there are the sensory fibers that carry sense. So you can tell what you're touching, what temperature you're feeling, if you're feeling pain or not, etc. So these fibers basically come out of your spinal cord and posteriorly, they come out in the dorsal root. Anteriorly, they come out in the ventral root. These fibers mix right over here. They mix up the sensory and motor and form an anterior rami, ventral rami, you can call it as well, and the dorsal rami. The dorsal rami are basically responsible for supplying the areas of your back, the skin of your back, and mostly the uh, parts of your back. The ventral rami, however, now these will supply areas of your anterior part and your limbs. So the ventral rami basically of the T1 to T11 spinal nerves are known as the intercostal nerves. I hope this concept is clear to you now. So this is the intercostal nerve if it is in the T1 to T11 segments. So let's talk about the course of this nerve as we have already talked about its origin. The origin is basically the fact that intercostal nerve is formed by the anterior primary rami of your T1 to T11 nerves. What about the T12th? Well, the T12th nerve does not have the name intercostal nerve. It has a different name. It is known as the subcostal nerve. The course of the intercostal nerve is basically, let's imagine that this is the rib. This is the head, this is the neck, the tubercle, and finally, the entire rib. So what is the course of your intercostal nerve? Once the intercostal nerve is originating, it emerges in front of the neck of the rib. After it comes in the neck of the rib, it enters your costal groove. If you all remember in the inner surface, in the lower part of your inner surface of the ribs, there was a costal groove. And a costal groove, I already explained, it had the structures from above downwards, the posterior intercostal vein, the posterior intercostal artery, and then the intercostal nerve. So, after it emerges in front of the neck, it runs in the costal groove in the lower part of your rib with relations of the following structures. The posterior intercostal vein above, then the in posterior intercostal artery below that, and finally itself. All right. It runs all around the rib between the layers of internal intercostal muscle and the intercostalis intimi, all right? And finally, when it comes right close to the sternum, right about here, it has to undergo termination. So we have talked about its course. Now let's talk about its termination. This nerve has to end up supplying your skin. Hence, when it terminates, it has to become cutaneous. 
So, to, for in order for something to become cutaneous, it has to get out of the deep part that it is lying in. Hence, it has to pierce the structures to come out. So, the intercostal nerve, when it reaches close to the sternum, it pierces the internal intercostal muscle, the external intercostal muscle, the pect major, the superficial fascia to finally become the anterior cutaneous nerve. And that was its termination. Now let's talk about the branches that the intercostal nerve gives. The intercostal nerve gives obviously muscular branches to supply the external intercostal muscle, the internal intercostal muscle, the transversus thoracic muscle, the various muscles of between in your intercostal space. Apart from that, it also gives a collateral branch that accompanies the nerve throughout. Then we have the sensory branches. Now that is an important topic. The sensory branches obviously include your anterior cutaneous nerve, which it terminates as. The anterior cutaneous nerve basically, once it comes out, it basically divides into a medial and a lateral branch to supply the skin of your anterior part of the thoracic wall. And near the angle of the rib, the Intercostal nerve gives a branch known as the lateral cutaneous nerve. The lateral cutaneous nerve pierces. This has to become cutaneous as well. Hence, it has to pierce all the structures to reach the superficial fascia. And over here, it divides into an anterior and posterior branch to supply the skin of your lateral thoracic wall. Other branches include some branches that are supplying the parietal pleura, pleura meaning the covering of the, of the lung, and some supply the parietal peritoneum. Here it is important to know that out of the 11 thoracic nerves, the thoracic nerve 1 and 2 also supply the upper limb. If you guys remember, how do, does it supply the upper limb? The T1 is involved in the brachial plexus, while the T2 is the intercostal brachial nerve, which was supplying the upper medial side of your arm. So the T2 intercostal brachial nerve, how was it formed? The intercostal nerve T2, when it gave the lateral cutaneous branch, this lateral cutaneous branch of the T2 is known as the intercostal brachial nerve. So anyway, the T1, T2 supplied the upper limb and the lower five nerves, which are the T7 to T11. These five nerves also supply the abdomen. Hence, these are known as the thoracoabdominal nerves. The nerves that are left between these are the third to the sixth nerves. These T3, T4, T5, T6 are known as typical thoracic nerve as they solely supply the thoracic wall. They do not have any other supply. However, these and these, these supply upper limb, these supply abdomen. Hence, due to the supply of these nerves to the upper limb, these, these to the abdomen, hence, if there is any kind of irritation in your intercostal nerves, maybe at the level of your chest, this pain can be referred to your abdomen or to your upper limb as well because it shares common supply with these areas. So that was a basic outline of your intercostal nerve which is the main nerve of your thoracic wall. In the next video we will discuss the vessels of your thoracic wall. Until then thank you so much for watching.